How you doing everyone? <laughs> Greg and I here. How you doing? Hello, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting from Geneva. As you can see, we're outside the main train station among the taxis. <laughs> the plan of action is this morning. What is the plan of action? How's it going, everyone? You are watching How Not to Travel Europe with me, Tom Davis, and Welsh Greg. Unofficial stepbrother, best pal, and longtime partner in crime when it comes to mischievous adventures. Over the next five instalments, you'll follow the story of our spontaneous escapade, starting at the wealthy Alpine haven of Geneva, and hopefully ending in the medieval capital of Bratislava. With no tent, hardly any planning, and a strict policy of no paying for public transport or accommodation, it promised to be interesting at best. Throw in a few unconventional modes of transport, six bizarre challenges, and nine days to do it all in, it promised to be a cracking adventure. But to understand why, you've got to go back 14 years to a time when me and Greg would set off into the mysterious Staffordshire countryside aiming for far away radio masts with nothing but a fiver in our pockets and a lust for adventure. We'd hardly sprouted pubes and we were hopping fences, running from farmers, battling through forests and wading through rivers. These missions are the very foundations of the mission across Wales and for this trip in which we aim to rekindle the magic of those early missions. The fun, the mischief, the hairy situations, the interactions with our fellow human beings, and most of all, the stories. Originally, we were supposed to have 10 days for this trip, which was already pushing it, but just 30 minutes before takeoff. What a start to the trip this is. Flight cancelled. Cheers, EasyJet. It wasn't the end of the world, but it did mean that making good ground each day was now more of a priority, at least for the time being. On the plus side, I did witness this on the way back from Birmingham. But it only served to hasten my desire to leave the country. The next day though, I was back on the road to Heathrow, annoyingly, but before long I was in Switzerland and ready to join forces with Greg. I can smell the adventure already. <laughs> now we had a rough idea of where we wanted to get to on our first day, but the uncertainty lay with how we were going to get there. Our plan was to jump on the next train to the wealthy lakeside city of Lausanne, which in itself had its dangers, and then we would try our luck hitching a ride on a speedboat to Montreux. I know what you're thinking, who the fuck would do that for us? We weren't sure but we were hoping that with a bit of luck, charm and persistence, we could somehow wangle it. The mad thing is, I'd actually managed to arrange a ride on a luxury boat from Lausanne to Montreux through one of my subscribers, Michel. But that was for the day before. Thanks again, EasyJet. But you know what? Maybe it was better this way. And if not, we'd have to try our luck hitchhiking on the roads. Either way, we had to make it beyond Martigny today, and in an ideal world, the town of Sion. Right now though, we were kind of cacking ourselves about this train. That very same morning, a spanner was inserted gently into our works by our lovely Genevan hosts, who warned that the Swiss ticket inspectors were pretty damn hot, meaning there was a good chance of getting fined or at the very least booted off. We would need to think outside the box if we were to avoid such a calamitous start to the trip. We discovered that the next but one train to Lausanne actually went straight through without stopping, which gave us what we thought at the time to be an idea. I think what we're anticipating is a fat controller, sort of bald ticket man, come over to us, ask us for our ticket to uh, Lausanne, and we go, no, we're going to Neon. And he'll explain this train doesn't stop at Neon. We'll say, um, you know, when can we get the next ticket back to Neon from Lausanne? We'll play very sad. And hopefully he'll just kick us off at Lausanne. No fine. That's what we're hoping. But uh, it depends what kind of character he is, I guess. So we'll see. 
We ambled our way over to the worryingly lavish looking train, like the clueless tourists we were. Two, two guys there in the middle, in the middle carriage. And they're coming off the train. Is this all new? For a while, we thought it would be fun to try and avoid the inspectors by actively seeking them out and then using the double decker layout of the train to bypass them. But they'd thought of their own solution for that having two people. There's a woman now coming this way. Okay, let's go. So, in the end, we admitted defeat, took our seats, and prepared ourselves for the inevitable. Maybe if we waffled loudly about our fictional day out in Neon, we could add to our innocent facade. Chris, because he's going to drive us up in the front. He is. We're really putting him out, to be honest. Then came the moment of truth. At this speed, I think we were there in about five minutes. Yeah, I heard it was 20 minutes, but I'm going to buy it. At least, I mean, 20 minutes would be too long in a sense, because you'd never, you'd never actually end, end up getting there. I can't wait to see the sea front of Neil. I'm really looking forward to that. They're not even on the stage. He's asking people for tickets in there, mate. He's actually checking people's tickets in there, look. This is it, I think. What do you reckon, Greg? I think this is it. Lausanne. You had one job to do, and you failed miserably. <laughs> right, let's get a ride on a speedboat then. Bonjour. Pumped from our train ride, we decided to clamber our way down from the station externally. The view from the road confirming that it was completely pointless. <laughs> but we were in the mood for a mission, and straight away a gap in the buildings got us thinking. We knew the marina was directly south from the train station, and we were keen to get there quick to maximise our chances of a lift. Now, a lot of these roads weren't going south, they were going east to west and we didn't have a map. So, straight line missioning in Geneva. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh God. Like someone saying that really. Let's do it, okay. We'll be there in no time at this rate. We are walking into a dead end. <laughs> Is it a dead end? Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that, won't we? <laughs> if I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking told you. <laughs> no. Our nostalgic shortcuts must have worked wonders. Not only had we reached the lake in record time, but somehow we'd popped out exactly at the marina, where straight away it was Here time to are. prepare ourselves to put on our most persuasive charm. Chances of us getting a uh, like a sailboat is probably low because there's such an effort to like yeah <laughs> that you need the wind to be right. Yeah, yeah. We need like a nippy little craft. Is there anyone out there who's willing and able to take us to Montreux? Excuse me. The marina was big but quiet and mostly inaccessible. So we spoke to the first bloke we saw. Um, you might be willing to take us in your boat. Uh, teaching. If so, it's not a prize yeah. thing. Okay. But this booming voiced skipper could only offer us pricey boat driving lessons. Okay, thanks. Cheers. The only other active boat we saw was another returning driving instructor. <laughs> Bonjour. Is it? I feel the call, yeah. Our only remaining option, other than to wait around, was to speak to the guys in the boat club slash shop. 
Maybe there was some cool wakeboarder guy there who had some free time, or maybe knew someone who did. Or maybe there was just a normal bloke with poor English and no idea what we were trying to achieve. Uh, uh, Private, yes, that's okay. Um, but he did give us this. Okay, he's given us this. I have no idea how <laughs> fruitful that will be. But... <laughs> Isn't legible in the slightest, but... Um... <laughs> Is that a G or a 9? G or 9, the number didn't work. And things were looking pretty desperate in this buzzless boatyard. But then, a ray of hope. Is it? Yeah, mate. It's just about open. One of the private jetties had been left open. Don't show that. <laughs> no way. Otherwise, we're swimming out. OK, we're not supposed to be in here. Luckily, it was left open. Clumsy old rich fool. <laughs> just got to hope that there's someone about. OK, we're going to ask this guy, I think. Shall we? Should we come back down? He doesn't look like he knows what YouTube is, right? Yeah. Neither does he don't look fast enough for our purposes. <laughs> but the jetty was a dead end. Our hopes rested on one portly middle-aged man. Okay, the only guy on this whole jetty is this guy here, and we don't think he speaks good English, but let's have a look. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, tu parles anglais? It's no problem if not, but if you had a, some, a free hour or however long it takes, then... Ah, okay, but I, yeah. I don't... Uh, perhaps someone is going to Montreux... Uh, yeah. There, but he, I you. go, no? No, that's yeah. okay. No? Do you, do you, is there another you, port? You can take the boat, there's a big boat. Yeah. The rules for the show is we're not allowed to use public transport yeah. and stuff. Ah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's all like... Ah. Yeah. It's all improvised. It's improvised, yes. transport. <laughs> is, is there another port over there? Another harbour, I mean? Yes, uh, every village has his, his spot. It's yeah. uh, two to three kilometers. Merci. No Merci. Problem. We go and check. Thanks for your time. Okay, thanks. Ciao. Au revoir. Bye. Au revoir. Bloody nice guy, wasn't it? Bloody nice guy. The gate opened the old twig. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the update, Thomas? Well, we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> Nothing else. I guess we're heading to the next harbour. Try our look there, but these harbours don't really seem too fruitful. Plus it's, uh, what is it, Wednesday? Yeah, no one's really knocking about. So, so. it's dead. You can always hitchhike, so, you know, we're moving in the right direction. But the truth was, we really wanted to get a ride on a boat. Morning. Despite the lack of success thus far, our spirits were high. I mean, the weather was incredible and we couldn't have been in a nicer place. That is beautiful, boys, that is! All we needed to make this day unforgettable was to be whizzed towards the misty horizon of this endless flat lake by some rich Swiss hunk called Marco. That was incredibly refreshing. Then, whilst jokingly hailing over a passing speedboat... Hey! <laughs> hey! The incredibly slim odds of that actually happening suddenly increased slightly. <laughs> A ray of hope. <laughs> Whoever this guy was, he'd actually heeded our half-assed call. Bonjour. <laughs> anglais? It's uh, a, a strange request that we have. You want to ride? Yeah, so... Basically, basically yeah. we're trying to get across Europe okay. in as many different modes of transport as possible. Okay. We wondered if you could take us a little way down the lake. Right now, because it's uh, like for wakeboard. Ah, OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't tempt you. Like for me, I, no. OK, but for the company, I cannot. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, if it was, yeah. maybe if you, if you were in your free time, you, you yeah, could yeah. do it. But yeah. you have to wait there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair enough, mate. Thanks totally anyway, understand. Mate. Thanks a lot for your Merci. time. Merci. Merci. In reality, he was just trying to make a living. He was the ideal candidate, though, if he had free time and it was his boat. Like, he was he ideal. Was, just too occupied, sadly. Uh, on we go down the coast. <clears throat> Further on, whilst exploring some of the more hidden private harbours, something even more improbable happened. Greg and I were just fantasising about how cool it would be to own a house here on the lake when this guy walks past. Hello, Tom. It's Michel, Michael. It was the very guy who had arranged the speedboat for me the previous day. Just walking his dog with his girlfriend. Bizarre. Take it easy. Thank you, yeah. But time was kind of slipping away from us now. 
and our hopes hinged on this last cluster of masts. This might be our last. This is the last hope. Last hope down here. Hope. No, it's not for lawn. There's a chance. We're going to get it. We're going to do it. It was the marina that the bare-chested man of Lausanne had spoken of, and there were plenty of boats, including this speedy-looking vessel. That would be perfect. But again, the place was absolutely dead, and eerily silent too, until this gaggle of noisy students marched their way past, presumably on their lunch break, and that gave us another shit idea. So it's a bit wacky, it's a bit out there, but we've got our eyes on this boat. We're not going to steal it, but all the wakeboards, the water skis inside there, we just think that the kind of guys who own that boat, who we think are having their lunch in this restaurant, we're hoping that they're the kind of people who'd be like, yeah, jump in, man, we'll take you to Montreal. Might be totally off the mark there, but we're going to wait it out for a few minutes just in case. We gave the phantom boat owners 15 minutes to polish off their lobsters, or else we'd have no choice but to put this improvised sign to use. It's a nice pen. <laughs> it's very smooth, yeah. Okay. Right, we've given up on this. The boat's still firmly there. Everything's still on display, but presumably they're still having their din-dins. But we've got our sign. We're gonna try our luck hitchhiking. Ah, there's the main road up there. Yeah. It's right there. What are the odds of seeing that shambles of a club out here? <laughs> Good God. I don't think this is too bad. No, it's not a petrol station. Ah, okay. If we go just before yeah, it, they can before. pull in, yeah? yeah? Yeah. We chanced upon a nice shady spot by the petrol station. It was now a question of how generous are the wealthy citizens of Lake Geneva? Right, look at this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty damn generous, it turns out. Sweet. Yeah, that's fine. That's somewhere. Thanks. Just Veve. Veve was roughly two thirds of the way to Montreux, which, after a five-minute wait, was good enough for us. But who was the generous gentleman who'd be taking oh. us there? We think his name was Jerome, and thanks to his luscious blonde locks, we were now right on schedule. That is wonderful. C'est magnifique. <laughs> Gerald was a man of few words, but then why do you need to speak when you've got views like this? Wow. Only a road for good monster. Yeah, this yeah, is perfect. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Merci beaucoup. Nice to meet you. Jerry had actually dropped us off right by Veve Marina, where the temptation to search for a boat returned. But the temptation to do this was stronger. <laughs> Did you get a boat, mate? No, but I got that. <laughs> Much to the dissatisfaction of this old timer. But it mattered not because before my trunks even had chance to dry, they were set to be dampening the seat of our next chauffeur. Bonjour. Natalie, a zesty, free-spirited, independent young woman with just enough room in her car to take us boys to Montreux. She was actually returning from a dance festival where she danced the can-can in this frilly, multicolored dress. But there was so much more in Natalie's locker than dancing the can-can, and just minutes later, she was picking apart the very laws that govern our existence. Uh, and I, I don't take drugs, but anyway, yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> the make spiritual the spiritual world. The, the, yeah. yeah, exactly. The, world. the mysticism that we say mystic, yeah. mm -hmm. and the, the physics and the science that is behind that. I'm trying to make the link ah. between both worlds. Wow. Maybe but, it's beyond science. Then, as we entered the historic streets of Montreux, she pulled this out the bag. Okay, guys, if, if we can, I'm going to try to offer you a ride, okay? A yeah. ride on what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice start, right? Starting today. <laughs> yeah. A very good start to the trip. Yeah. A very, very good yeah. start to the trip. Turns out that as well as being a free thinker, Natalie was an accountant 
And one of her clients just so happened to be Water Sports Montreux. Bonjour. Where we met our bronze hunk, Jordi. Hey, Tom. Jordi. <laughs> nice to meet you. So you reached your destination? We did, did. thanks yeah. to uh, Natalia here. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. The deal was that in return for a simple mention on YouTube, we would get to go wake surfing for free. After spending all day asking people for a ride on their boat, we'd somehow ended up on one without even trying. Better still, we were about to do water sports, and in this setting too. It was just surreal. In fact, I think I got a bit too excited. <laughs> Thankfully for everyone else on board, it was time to wake surf, with Geordie keen to show us how it was done. As the boat accelerates, the shape of the stern kicks up a big wave, and once you're up and steady, you can let go of the rope and ride that wave for as long as the lake will let you, which in the case of Lake Geneva is basically forever. Almost. Now it was our turn. Always wear a life jacket, people. Now, Greg had done a bit of wakeboarding before, so out of the two of us, he had the best chances of not embarrassing himself. Oh! But after his first two attempts... Go on, Greg! Oh. Those chances were getting slimmer. But then... Yeah! He's done it! Greg was up and running. He'd nailed the standing up bit. Could he let go of the rope and surf? Ah, oh, man. Could I do any better, though? Well, here's my first attempt. Nice. 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 <laughs> Which also happened to be my best. From then on, I did the opposite of Greg and got worse with every attempt. Best left to the pros, I think. She's sick. As quickly as it had come about, our spontaneous water sports experience was over. We thanked our instructors dearly, quickly used up all the ink in their pen for our next sign, as if they hadn't helped us enough already, and bid them farewell. Bye, Bye. Bye, thank you. Au revoir. That was sick, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, obviously we've just had a wonderful time. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that, mate. <laughs> um, but it's half four now. That is the time. It's half four. Pushing um, it. Pushing it pushing quite it. finely. So, we've got to find another hitchhiking spot. Over there. Over there, apparently. <laughs> yeah, according to Mr. Davis Jones here. <laughs> We're not related in that sense, but uh, anyway. We are fuck really. you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Fuck anyway. Fuck <laughs> shut up. <laughs> anyway, the point is we've got some moving to do. We've got some fucking ground to make. Then, two minutes later. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> to get on. <laughs> Oh, merci. <laughs> well, oh, man. that didn't take us long. Any train we get on, we've warned you, we ain't paying for it. Be it a small child's tourist train around or Lake Geneva or a fully functioning <laughs> national rail service <laughs> from London Euston to, to Basic Stoke. <laughs> we actually made some really useful ground on this train. Bonjour. Bonjour. We were let on as a sort of joke, really. But by God, we took full advantage, popping out right by the real train station, just in case we needed a plan B, and in the perfect spot to actually hitchhike to Martigny. Right, we're hoping now we can hitchhike again to Martigny and beyond. We need to get past that today. This is the thing, it's getting on. That big highway up there, that's where we're going to make the real miles. But this time, the traffic vibe was different. A constant flow of big wigs in expensive cars racing home after work. Isn't it just the case in life, mate, that the people who pick you up drive the worst cars? Because oh, they just yeah. sound like they sound, yeah. you know, Range Rovers and sports cars. 
You don't stand a chance. Yeah, like. They don't want to get their big cars dirty, do they? Nah. It's too stinky peats. Like st <laughs> and then our odds of getting picked up took a further blow. Right, slight turn of event. <laughs> uh, it's starting to rain, so... Uh... Two stinky peats was one thing. Two wet stinky peats was another. So we prepared for the worst. Greg's just checked the train times there. Just in case we have no luck with this, we can hop on another train. But five minutes later... Yeah, man. A man in a sparkling black beamer came to our rescue. Uh, Martini. Martini. Uh, Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Where? Where? After Villeneuve. Where? Where? C'est ça. That's fine. Okay. Merci. Merci. The trend booking man in question was JL, originally of Kosovo. We're leaving the lake now. He couldn't take us to Martini, but he did one better. He took us to a crucial junction beyond Villeneuve where we could finally get onto the motorway and potentially much further. Despite speaking no English, he took a keen liking to my Mission Across Wales series, watching the entire two minute intro whilst driving. Yeah, that's not dangerous at all. He even gave us a really useful parting gift. Really? Merci <laughs> bien. Oh, merci. You're a great guy, man. Great man. Merci. See ya. He gave us an umbrella, like, what a sound. <laughs> the umbrella matched Greg's top perfectly. And we joked that that was the sole reason he'd given it to us. You just had to have it. You just had to. I love fashion. I love it. Oh. <laughs> it was only when I looked back at the footage that I discovered that he actually did. The man had a deep burning passion for fashion. Well, we've edged our way a bit further down the valley, or up the valley rather. I'd say we're about five, six miles from Martinique. Miles, yeah. We've had fun and we're making ground. So uh, and these what, women are laughing at us. What are you laughing at? That's what counts. Oh, is this guy pulling over? Where? Colombia. We weren't going there, but the frequency of bangers was promising. There's a banger. <laughs> Fucking hell, Doris. Plus, Greg and I were now radiating spirit and warmth, brightening these local Swiss people's days with our daftness. You're going that way, aren't you? Even the gendarme couldn't resist it. And then, no, we didn't get arrested for crimes against fashion. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and follow Tom? Tom, and that's Greg. And Greg. Greg. Yes. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice Tom to meet Greg. you, man. Paolo, originally from Portugal, was a generous, modest, funny, and downright cool bloke with an easygoing attitude and a lust for life. The kind of guy whose presence instantly makes you feel at ease, like you've known each other for years. Greg, we met some cool people today. You're the coolest, though. <laughs> We exchanged stories and we told him about how our first day had gone so far. Big boarding, like a speedboat. <laughs> and she said, do you want to come on the boat with me for free? We went wake surfing. We went wake surfing. Yeah, have you heard of I'm that? not the coolest one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, still, you still are though, somehow. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Paolo then told us that a good friend of his lived in a massive student house in Sierre, just beyond Sion, with a bunch of hippie students. Depending on whether he was at home, we could probably crash there the night, which, with the weather forecast we'd seen all day, was quite an alluring thought, even if hippies can be a bit mental. That'd be, that'd be cool, yeah, as yeah. an option, sure. I mean, we can see it, if it, what he says. Yeah. Yeah. In the end, though, he was out of town. Our sleeping spot was once again in the lap of the gods. Maybe it was better that way. You've been a great addition to our adventure. It's <laughs> <laughs> really helpful. Yeah. Thanks, man. Have fun Pleasure. and good luck. Thanks, we'll try, yeah. Sorry about the cage. Yeah, that's <laughs> alright. Anyway. He's an animal, he deserves it. <laughs> Thanks good so luck. much, Paolo. See you. All the best. Good luck. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Fucking, I'm being gassed here. <laughs> Adios. Adios. Oh boy. Oh. Our all too brief encounter with Paolo was over. Paolo, great I've, got dude. A, I've got a tear in my eye. I really have. <laughs> but yet again, the generosity of our fellow human beings had left us in the highest of spirits. We love you, Paolo! <laughs> Which was useful because we still had one last section of road to cover. That'll do. 
We'd done well to scrape ourselves this far, this late on, but our sights were firmly set on our original target of Sion. Nothing would cap this day off more than getting another swift lift. That way we could scout out a good place to sleep in the last light of the day before hitting the town for some well-earned food and celebratory beverages. We joked about another Paolo-esque character coming to our rescue. We weren't far off. I, I speak uh, a small bit of French and put it up, but... Uh... Ah, Okay, I need, nice. I need to practice. Nice. Greg. Uh, uh, my name's Greg. I am Philip. Philip, nice to meet you. Philip, I'm Tom. Uh, yes, hello. Nice to meet you. It, for me, it's the same. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, I am from Portugal, you know. Oh, I, yeah. uh, if you, you call me for, for, um, for uh, enjoy, you know. Yeah. Chefs, you know that, that. Drug dealer or seasoned raver? We couldn't quite tell from his wayward ramblings. All we knew is that he was also from Portugal, but that he didn't know Paolo, that he made the football kits for FC Sion, and that his love for swearing in the English language was greater than his love for life itself. But as erratic and excitable as he was, Philippe was about to surge his way up our little leaderboard of lifts. Oh, is that yeah, it up there? That's the fucking thing you see. <laughs> yeah. Up here. Not only had Philippe taken us beyond Sion to his current hometown of Sierre, but he was now taking us by foot to a chateau, a castle, up on a hill. Exactly the kind of place that we'd been hoping to stumble across ourselves. Hopefully, its historical nooks and crannies could provide us with the perfect shelter for the night. There might even be a clumsily unlocked door or a room we could sneak into. Or it could be totally inaccessible and guarded by security. We didn't really know at this point, but we were itching to get up there and find out. This is fucking sick. We climbed our way up through the grapevines, the view of the town expanding with each step we took. The steps themselves becoming increasingly impressive and princely. And it was here on these princely steps that we shared a lovely moment with Philippe. This is like a, it reminds me of Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. Ah, yes, <laughs> yes the two, Tomb Raider two. Number two, yeah, yeah. yeah. Number or... two, uh, the house, the mansion. Yeah, with yeah. The guy, the guy yeah. Uh... And then you, you locked him in the, the fridge, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy, you have the ends out of the fridge, <laughs> and the fridge explodes, man. It's fucking psychedelic, man. I'm done. Some things are just universal. Philippe quickly pointed out to us where all the best bars were in town before leaving us to explore the grounds of the chateau. Thanks for everything, man. All the best, Pierce, man. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I, I will see your channel. Yes. I have subscribe, yes? Yes, subscribe. you subscribe. Yeah, just subscribe, yeah. <laughs> I, I, easy, I will man. go watch your insane thing. <laughs> <laughs> have fun, man. Huh? Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, mate. All the best. Can I just say, we've just met the two nicest guys that ever graced the land of Portugal. What are the odds of that? One after another. So. The main chateau building looks pretty inhabited, and the only hidden doors and passageways we could find were securely locked. Mate, we can sit down here. Fuck that, mate. <laughs> so we started looking a bit further into the castle grounds, where we found this. Oh, yeah. Look at that, mate. You definitely sleeping there, mate. That's it. Oh, there's a fire there. Well, that's just ridiculous. And there's a water tap as well for us to drink water. <laughs> and as many grapes as you could possibly eat. Right, heading down for beers and pizza now. But we'll be back up at about 11 p.m. Pissed as far. Just look at that view. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Start. Sleeping However, here. that storm approaching from the... Doesn't look great. And when you look up here at those sirens, I think they're avalanche sirens that look very conductive to lightning. <laughs> that does worry you, um, but what a place to sleep. In town, we soaked up some Atmos. Fucking pumping. Engulfed oh, a massive pizza. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. And sunk lots of beers. Predictably though, it would prove to be one too many. We're heading up to uh, the spot, uh, our sleeping spot. Now, the journey back up to the castle is a tad hazy. But from these audio clips, it's pretty clear that instead of making our way to the tower, we ended up in some places that we probably weren't meant to be. Private dwellings in what seemed to be deep in the castle's grounds. Mate, where the fuck are we now? Definitely somewhere living there. Oh, 
Oh shit, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Mate, it's mission. Mission up here. Then we stumbled across this. Look at this place. Look at what we found. Drunk, disorientated, and in need of sleep, we made a controversial decision. Welcome to our humble abode. This is where we've decided to sleep tonight. We haven't got a clue where that tower is. Maybe we'll go back there in the morning and make a fire, but this is absolutely fine to sleep. And sheltered from the rain. We've got a door for added security. It's our own little room and uh, quite frankly, we've had a few pints and we don't give a shit. <laughs> So today should be interesting. Take your hands out. Fucking lunatic! Oh! 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 